Next, after months of intense negotiations, the U.S. Senate has passed landmark legislation aimed at fighting climate change and reducing health care costs. Though its official name is the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022, the package devotes more than $370 billion to countering global warming and greening America's energy grid, investments that are expected to cut U.S. carbon emissions some 40 percent by the end of the decade. The bill now goes to the House of Representatives, where its passage is expected to mark a major victory for President Joe Biden's policy agenda, particularly on climate. And for some more analysis, we can turn to France 24's environment editor, uh, Valérie de Camperou. The bill's passage through the Senate uh, is it's something of a political miracle for Democrats. Right? Just weeks ago, it looked like it was completely dead in the water. It is. Just as you said, some weeks ago, negotiations were on the brink of collapse. And so this vote now is the culmination of more than a year of negotiations between the more progressive core of the Democratic Party uh, advocating for radical, a radical plan that would transform American society, uh, the energy system there in the U.S., and a more conservative flank of the party advocating for a less ambitious package. And you might remember just if you weeks ago, everybody thought that the deal was doomed uh, when Democrats were battling uh, to get the green light from Senator Joe Manchin from West Virginia. And so it came as a shock to commentators and environmentalists when, in the end, they were able to secure uh, an agreement with uh, Senator Joe Manchin, although with a few major concessions, including the fossil fuels industry. So clearly quite a a bit of twists and turns to this saga to get here. But uh, it came down to a razor thin vote of 51 votes in favor, 50, 51 votes in favor, 50 against, with a uh, tie breaking vote from uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, and all Republicans, of course, voted against it. Um, and it certainly comes as a major victory for President Joe uh, Biden um, after 18 months of negotiations, but mostly a major victory for climate action. As you said, uh, a total of $430 billion in investments, uh, $370 billion will be injected in climate and energy programs. It is a major step forward. We've seen a number of reactions already this morning, including from the Union of Concerned Scientists saying the Senate is finally on the same wavelength as the American public when it comes to the climate crisis. Yeah, and $370 billion, by far uh, the most significant investment in U.S. Yep. history to counter uh, global warming. Will it put the country on track to meet its climate targets, though? It looks like it will. Um, it does put the U.S. on a steady path to meet its climate targets. And I have a, a graphic uh, that I'd like to show you. Uh, what we know is that the U.S. has pledged to slash emissions in half by 2030, so in the next uh, eight years. And with current policies, we would be heading towards a 27 reduction in planet warming gases. Uh, if we have that graphic there to, to show you uh there, there you go. So with current policies, you see there uh, greenhouse gas emissions, uh, a 50 percent reduction goal for 2030. With current policies, we'll be heading towards a 27 percent reduction. And with this plan, we would be heading towards a 40 percent, 42 percent reduction in the next uh, eight years. That is a pretty ambitious target, but that's uh, what the current numbers are saying. Uh, so this will definitely help the U.S. Uh, close the emissions gap and at least least hope to get to the a goal, the Paris Agreement goal of uh, keeping uh, temperatures below 1.5 degrees Celsius, 2 degrees Celsius, uh, according to the Paris Agreement. Now, beyond the numbers that we see here, this is pretty significant uh, from an international perspective, from a climate diplomacy perspective, uh, as we head towards the UN Climate Summit in Egypt later this year. And so the U.S. becomes, again, a more reliable partner uh, in climate diplomacy. And it is a strong signal that, you know, one of the world's biggest polluters is ready to keep its promises when it comes to the Paris Agreement. Now, if we go back maybe to what exactly is in the plan in order to achieve that 40 percent reduction. So we know that it includes tax credits for clean energy projects, uh, tax credits, and the bill would cover 30 percent of uh, the cost of buying uh, solar panels, of home battery storage, for example. Households could also receive receive up to $7,000 in tax credits to buy an electric car, for example.
example. Uh, so really a, a, a vast a variety of measures here in order to reach that target. But I would say that, that it is a compromise from the initial plan that was brought forward by President Joe Biden, uh, the tr $2 trillion the Build Back Better Act. That was the initial plan that Democrats hoped to approve. And now we have a scaled back version of that, as you said, uh, rebranded the Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, so it is a compromise, a big compromise, considering, as I said, uh, the Democrats agreed to a number of fossil fuel uh, and drilling provisions as a con as con concessions to uh, Senator Joe Manchin from West Virginia, West Virginia being a conservative state heavily dependent on coal and uh, gas. So now, as you said, it needs to be approved by the House before uh, President Joe Biden can sign it into uh, law. All right. Looking uh, forward to uh, the next step in that passage, at least a, a step in the right direction. Will it be enough? We don't know. Hopefully. Uh, Valerie DeCamp, uh, Environment Editor, France 24. Thanks, for, Thanks so much for that analysis.